tell me about who you are, your role, and uh, what you're here for. Well, I'm a senior producer at Blue Castle Games, currently working on uh, Dead Rising 2. I'm Jason Lee. I'm one of the founders of Blue Castle Games and also a senior producer on Dead Rising 2. We wanted to sort of walk everyone through the experiences we went through of trying to um, you know, bring Dead Rising uh, to current gen and re, uh, reimagining it, uh, but still holding on to the original Dead Rising feel. What were some of the design challenges that you had in dealing with you know, a sequel to such a, a, a big cult phenomenon? Part of the, the challenge was first of all figuring out what Dead Rising 1 was. Uh, and then how do we uh, do the sequel from scratch but replicate that same feel. So just taking Dead Rising 1, breaking it down, figuring out what made it tick, uh, and then building our own version of it. I think that's been the biggest challenge by far. So from a challenge to a positive aspect, what has been the thing that you found made it easy, being that it was such a popular sequel and you had something to build from? Mm, zombies. Yeah, I think that's uh, helped a lot of the team. Everyone really gets uh, really excited about the concept and all the creative uh, you know, ideas and everyone trying to come together with really gruesome ways to kill them. I think it's, at a core, everyone still really enjoys that concept. So as you know, kind of the creative visionaries of the game working in a, a team environment, what are your roles like as designers in that title? Both of us being senior producers, uh, we also have a lot of other support back at the studio. Uh, there's lots of other designers, over 10 on this project. Uh, and everybody is very steeped in Dead Rising 1, so a lot of our job, uh, I think, is somewhat easy because people understand what they're doing, but basically we're sort of there to, to corral and, and point everybody uh, towards the same vision. So uh, one of my uh, biggest roles on Dead Rising 2 was managing the core gameplay, uh, while Josh managed uh, sort of level design and, and world and missions and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a... It's an issue of coordination and just making sure that we're always on the same page and, and pushing our areas forward in parallel. Yeah, totally talking to the team a lot, getting out of your desk, working, the, working with the team, making sure they're really excited, giving them the opportunity to sort of uh, uh, fill in the blanks and not uh, get too detailed. Uh, it's, uh, it's our responsibility to always make sure everyone knows we're still making Dead Rising too. So both of you come from different backgrounds, and, you know, major companies, major titles that you've worked on. How is that different from, say, EA or Ubisoft compared to Blue Castle and what your team environment is like mm. there? Uh, I mean, the, the biggest thing uh, is that we work in a really uh, non-siloed sort of process. We really have everyone feel that it's a small studio development, you know, where uh, multiple disciplines and, you know, software engineers and animators can work together and, uh, and have that, that ownership over uh, the experience as opposed to, like, you know, you're in this department and you only do this one thing and let us know when it's done and we'll just take it from you. So that's been a, a, big, uh, a big difference for me. Yeah, and part of it, I think, from the very beginning with Blue Castle is we wanted an environment that really cut down on the walls. So uh, other companies, um, you know, everyone's in a cube, perhaps. Uh, we wanted to avoid that. And uh, if we have cube walls at all, they only come up to about sort of waist height so that uh, you can always just poke your head up and, and talk to the guy who needs to support you and, and needs to help you get the, the uh, area of the game that you're working on to the best quality level possible. So what... What was your priorities coming in, knowing that you were doing this sequel? What were the key things that you wanted to focus on? Definitely satisfy the fans of Dead Rising 1. Uh, because the game, was, the first game was so popular, uh, it, it was a bit of a, uh, not a burden, but a responsibility to make sure that we were delivering something that would really satisfy them, but also something that would appeal to even a, a broader audience, because the install base now on 360 is so much larger, and because the game is going to PS3 and PC as well. Um, so we took that very, very seriously, yeah, making sure that, that people felt like it was an extension of Dead Rising. How have both of you approached the sandbox nature of this game while still maintaining story as an important part mm. of that? Um, that really, that's built into Dead Rising, um, the concept of time. Um, if you can imagine, you know, the, uh, the idea with the missions in, in this game is we really want to make sure the player has the freedom to sort of achieve their goals in the way that they want. The only thing we hold them to is time. Uh, so uh, it's an you know it's an awesome sandbox experience, but you still have that urgency. And if you miss uh, miss getting that that mission uh, complete, you could potentially lose the whole story. Um, so it really I think appeals to players uh, you know who want to like be a more of a completionist and try to like push their way through, or players that just want to like uh, you know I just want a sandbox and I just want to kill zombies and I want to level up my uh, my avatar. What encouraged you to take part in the Game Design Expo and sharing your process? I actually came for the first time a few years ago and was really impressed with, by some of the speakers and, 
and some of the the sort of behind the scenes uh, insight that I got, uh, even having been in the industry for about ten years at that point, uh, I came away feeling like I had learned new stuff. I mean, I remember Bungie was here and they were showing off some of their audio tools, and uh, some of the other presentations were showing things that you just don't really get a chance to see otherwise, uh, unless you're down at something like GDC. So. Uh, this was just a really cool opportunity to kind of come and, and do our version of that and uh, it was nice that Capcom was gracious enough to allow us to show so much of the game before it's even released. What are your opinions of the game industry in Vancouver? Where do you see it going? How do you see it evolving? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I came from Eastern Canada and, and another development hotbed and I find, again, Vancouver is just huge. Um, what I love about it is there's a, the game development community is actually relatively tight-knit and small. We know each other, and, and it's awesome to be in a, a, a town with so many studios where we can sort of cross-pollinate and, uh, and have all these opportunities here. It's great. There's a wealth of talent. Uh, people do tend to circulate a little bit, which is nice because it, it freshens things up. And right now it feels like there's a lot of big industry games being made in the city, so that's really exciting. And we're certainly excited to be part of that. If you could provide one piece of advice to somebody that's an aspiring game designer, mm -hmm. what would that be? Um, it's not about the tools, it's about the idea, the passion, the commitment, and knowing how to get there and getting a team to sort of rally behind you. And I would back that up. I think having passion is probably the number one thing. If, if you don't love to do this, then uh, you should be doing something that you do love. Uh, so bring that passion, that commitment, uh, and then just uh, adding knowledge to that. Keep yourself busy, do your own thing, and don't do huge things. <laughs> do small things Do small well. things well to start. <laughs> Well, thank you both for uh, answering these questions and being a part of our game design expo. It's cool. Much our pleasure. Thanks. Yeah.